Okay, the book that I have just finished and only recently acquired is Verucia by E.C. Tubb. I'm really thrilled to have got it. Uh, the series is the Earl Dimorest series and I there's 33 in the series. They're old, I don't believe they've ever been reprinted. This is the eighth and it's one of the two or three that I'm missing before I've got the whole saga. I'll try to link a photo of the th a thumbnail photo of the ones I've got on the shelf above. Um, the cover is marvellous. It's pure pulp era classic sci-fi with a woman in a bikini made of golden bubbles which is even more dodgy when it reaches the crotch area. The woman does not strongly resemble Verucia who's the main female in this book. The arena does not strongly resemble the arena that is at the start of the book and the over muscular bronzed blonde male does not in any noticeable way resemble Earl Damarest, especially not the faux viking helmet that he appears to be wearing but at least he's fighting a bird which does actually happen in the book okay so i'm happy to get it because i've been trying to complete this series for a long time i don't think they've ever been reprinted but before i talk about the earl dumaris saga let's mention ec tubb ec tubb was an english writer edwin charles tubb um, he died in 2010 he was a pulp writer. He wrote, read a lot of pulp sci-fi in his childhood, as he describes it. And then in the late 30s, I think it was, he connected with the British sci-fi community and started writing his own. He wrote something like 150 books and well over 200 short stories and novellas. He won a few novellas, uh, Nebula Awards and a few other awards. Very, very prolific. I think he also wrote westerns, actually. Now, so his best known saga is meant to be Dumarest. In America, apparently they call it Dumarest of Terror, but I think for the rest of us, it's the Earl Dumarest saga. 33 books, like I said earlier. Each book is a self contained adventure, but while the character of Earl Dumarest never really changes from book one to book 32, which is as high up as I've managed to climb. Um, the stories evolve. In the early parts, there's always one female. In this case, it's Verucia herself. And there's always, almost always an arena fight or some sort of personal combat. And there is in this more than once. As the story progresses, well, we won't worry about that today. So because this is early in the novel, Numerous has already clashed with his ongoing mortal enemy throughout the series. That's the Psy Clan. And in this one, he starts off on a world and in all, he's trying to escape it, but something is trying to push him to go in a given direction. He resists that because Dumarest resists this sort of thing and possibly he also realises that it's a Cyclan trying to herd him into a particular corner of the universe. He escapes to the world of... Da -da 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 Dumia? Daria? Da -da? Da -da? Something beginning with a D? Um, how annoying. Oh well, it's a world. There's a different world for every book in the same way that there's a different female for every book. In this one, when he gets there, he's got no money, so he has to go into the arena to fight. The arena is newly established in this world. Each world has its own very unique physiognomy in the Dumara saga, and this one is no exception. It was settled fairly early in the expansion out from Earth. It's got a fairly liberal um, community, social structure, but the entire world is owned by one person who is called the owner. You've got a whole heap of first citizens underneath him, and then you've got the majority of the people who are nothing in particular. Which reminds me that I haven't talked about the galaxy in which Dumarest is set. The galaxy in which Dum El Dumarest is set is one of those very classic pulp sci-fi galaxies. Humanity is expanded from the Earth. There's hundreds of millions of worlds. Each one's got its own structure, its own ecology, because humans could settle on all of them. The twist for this one is that no one's heard of Earth and no one knows where it is. No one, in fact, most of the galaxy doesn't believe that all of humanity could have originated on one planet because there's such a huge variation among them. We won't address the issue of 
future science and biology not realizing that mutation is responsible for that and not realizing that species don't interbreed with other species in the higher vertebrates bit of a problem we won't worry um so set in this universe Earl Dumeris left his home on earth when he was very young he stowed away and uh, when the ship he stowed away on ended he kept on going ship after ship world after world galaxy after galaxy no star system after star system sorry about that and finally when he decided to go back to earth it was when he realized that no one knew where it was and in fact no one believed in it earth like el dorado and one or two other mythic planets is a legend it can't exist most people have never even heard the legend and when he says he's looking for earth they go what a strange name for a planet earth just means mud or dirt surely surely you wouldn't name a planet that way and the fact that no intelligent person in this future galaxy realizes that every single planet has been actively named by someone coming in from outside again moving on from that one so in this one earl goes into the arena he fights this genetically engineered bird which is meant to kill him but he survives of course because Earl always survives because he's so humongously amazing men want to be him women want to be with him yeah 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 that sort of a character and then we find that the own current owner of the planet is seriously ill and that there's only two contestants for the position once he's gone the two children of the owner's brother and sister now one of them is there is sadistic and is promoting the use of the arenas and is coming under the control of the Cyclan so he's obviously the bad guy the other one is a woman she's got a strange mutation that's led to strange black marks all over her body which is actually quite well described and is actually drawn here though her leaning up against the side of the arena in a bikini made of bubbles is never mentioned those strange black strands actually do correspond a little bit to the way she's described in the book she's poor um, she doesn't have a lot of backing for the position of owner but she's got a little bit of information and after the after finishing in the arena Dumarest becomes paid to protect her and then he becomes her lover of course Dumarest always has a lover one per book and they go off to find evidence needed for her to become first citizen of this world great adventure story they're all a great great adventure stories and that's why I love them so much coming to this one it's been a year or two since I read any of the Earl Dumarests it doesn't disappoint in any possible way everything that you expect is there and you go into it knowing that it's pulp and that it's repetitious and that it's stereotyped and you still enjoy every word of it if you're like me I enjoy every word of it and more you know that Dumerist is the most stereotyped male in existence. You know that the women are going to be barely cut out figures. You know how the adventure is going to go. And yet still, every time I read it, I think this is a beautifully written, amazing book. In this one, they end up deep sea diving. So, of course, Deborah, any oceanic theme, instant winner. The spaceship that the original settlers uh, came in on is buried right at the edge of a deep sea trench it's sitting on the rip which is the edge of the continental shelf anything can send it over the edge and it does indeed go over the edge with Verugia in it and Dumarest knows, knows a secret which is why the Cyclan are hunting him of affinity pairs which will make which when arranged and two shots given to two different people will make one totally the slave of the other which is why the Cyclan want it because ultimately they want to control the universe bad guys remember um well Dumerist uses this affinity twin pairing between him as the dominant and a decapod how wonderful is this how many science fiction people know their animalia and not to even realize that crustacea exist as something else than a prawn on the barbie well not only does does EC Tub know this, he knows the difference between a decapod. A decapod is the ra range of crustacea that includes the lobsters. So imagine a lobster the size of a huge bus 
Gumarus takes control of it and sends it down into the void to pick up the ship and bring it back up to the surface. And as plot twists in classic sci-fi go, this is a complete winner for me. Now at the end of it, of course, Dumeres survives, he conquers the unconquerable and Verucha becomes owner of the world. So it's a happy ending all around and it's a satisfying ending in that it's satisfying for Verucha, who is actually quite likeable, more likeable than some of his females. And it is a very good way of leading into number nine, which I've already read, but I can't remember which one it is. Um, because Dumarest is very obviously trying to find his world. He isn't going to stop and stay just because he can be the lover of the, of the queen of the world. He's going to keep going. Okay, number nine is Mayan, which was written in the same year as this book. A lot of the early ones were named either after the planet on which they occur or after the lead, lead female. So Verucha is number eight. Then we've got nine, which is Mayen. We've got ten, which is John Dell. Then we've got eleven, Xenia, twelve, Eloise. All of those are named after the prime female. And then we go into a bit of more diversity of the titles. Anyway, if you like classic pulp sci-fi, I think that EC Tub will be for you. If you don't feel like investing in the Earl Dumarest saga, which is tricky because as far as I know they've not been reprinted. There's other EC tubs that have been reprinted by Masterworks. And if you come across an EC tub sitting neglected in an old second-hand bookshop, any of the early ones, buy it and read it and see if it hooks you because they are very much standalones and they are just such fun. For a short book that is 189 pages it keeps you far more invested than many, well, it keeps me far more invested than many of the other modern sci-fi that overthink themselves and are a little bit too pleased with their own cleverness. It's fun. Read it by all means. Comment, subscribe, all that sort of YouTube stuff. And on to the next book.